just explain to us how you got started. Someone, you're a private investigator, aren't you? Somebody came to you and wanted you to deliver some, some well, as we said, home truths to the mourners at their funeral. What an extraordinary request and, and why? Yes, good morning. How are you? Um, it's nice to uh, be here and be asked to uh, come on your show this morning. Um, look, it, it was all a uh, part of uh, an investigation I was doing for a gentleman who uh, is terminally ill or was terminally ill. He asked me to um, uh, gate crash his funeral, basically interrupt the service at a certain time and to uh, tell certain people to leave um, and some home truths as well. And I guess from there, um, it, it just went, you know, from... OK, there, let's just interrupt started, you. Uh, so this, this man knew he was going to die. He was terminally ill and you'd been working for him anyway. But he asked you That's to correct. turn up at his funeral and ask certain people to leave. Who did he want not to be at his funeral and for what reason? Well, he didn't want his brother there and he didn't want uh, his sister-in-law there. Um, he hadn't seen them in over 30 years, so why would they attend his funeral? It was one of those things that, um, we, you know, we, we never know who's going to turn up to our funeral and it's all pre-arranged or arranged by other people. So this was his way of saying, you know, basically, see you later. Yeah, but also at, on the, at this funeral, wasn't his best friend <coughs> uh, reading out a eulogy and didn't you interrupt him as well? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, his, his best mate or so-called best mate was reading the eulogy at the time I interrupted. I did um, uh, read out that his best mate had tried to um, uh, basically coerce his wife into having an affair. Um, she rejected this, but uh, he knew all about this. And, uh, you know, at the time, you, you've got to understand that funerals were all there to pay respects, you know, and, but no one's really respecting the dead. Because Bill, Bill, how, how, do you know, how, how do you know that the, the person who comes to you, in particular this guy, was telling the truth? How do you know he's just not got some petty squabble with well, his you family? Don't. Well, well, that's just it. You don't actually know, but at the end of the day, they don't want to take it with them. So, I mean, if they're going to lie on their deathbed, I mean, well, so be it. And, and let me just the day, and let me, let me just want try somebody at their funeral... Uh, let me just imagine this. What, what happens? You walk into the funeral. Do you actually... Do, is the first thing you say, look, I'm here on behalf of the deceased, I'm a private investigator, this is what I do, or do you just appear like any one of the other mourners and just come out with the, all these comments and, and criticising everyone that's there? Or some of them that are there, at least. Uh, so it's not all about criticising or, or abusing anybody. There's some loving messages as well. I mean, I attend the funeral service. I have a certain time to, uh, to, that I'm engaged to interrupt the service. I mean, some of the um, confessions I've done have been quite beautiful. Um, there's been some that uh, have been very moving. Um, you know, no, no one wants to leave their life partner. No one wants to die. You know, we all fear it at the end because we don't know. But, I mean, why take it to, with you? I mean, if you've got something to say, say it. But these people, you know, it's, it's the end of their life. Mm. They don't need to tell somebody then and there. They want to say it after they're gone, so why not? Yeah, it's interesting. It's not usually something that people have very much control over. So what you're doing is sort of having that control. Oh, you, you hey, mentioned, I'm you mentioned... learning my voice. <clears throat> yeah, the, um, you mentioned some of the sort of frightening stories and asking people to leave. But you also say there are some beautiful messages. And, I mean, I can imagine... Um, you know, if you're there, traumatised by the person that, you know, you're burying, and then you do hear something tender delivered by you at that funeral, that must be a pretty overwhelming moment. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, to, to stand there and to be able to interrupt a service that... or a eulogy, because, I mean, everybody, like I say, they speak about the person that's there and, and it's always nice and, and good about that person, but sometimes it might not be. And, and you've attended funerals yourself and you've sat there and you've respected the living. But what about the dead? How about respecting him? If you hear something at a eulogy that you don't like or you don't agree with, stand up, say something. At least, you know, give the person a voice. Let them know that, you know... You really knew them, you cared, and, and you loved them. Mm. I mean, I, I love all the, the fact that you might say something nice and mm. something quite warm and, and commiserating or, or, or passing on a lovely oh, you message. you want to hear the bad but, stuff. But I think, the bad, I, think that's I find that very tricky. I mean, I think, I think of funerals, and as, as callous as, it's, as it is to say, but it's, 
it isn't l really about the deceased anymore. It's about the people that are there mm. who are finding their it's ways of grieving. And you might, well have, you might well have, uh, have been sort of um, separated from your brother for 30 years, mm. but when he passes away, you might think, oh, you know what, I'm going to go there and I'm going to pay my respects and I'm going to have my own inner thoughts, my own inner feelings, and this is my way of saying that, look, I'm sorry for the last 30 years, I'm not, but you're not taking any oh, of that into course, account. That person feels to terrible to be there. And to see what you can get out of it. I mean, obviously, there's people that are going to turn up to your funeral to see what's left for you. I mean, come on, that's, that's life. <laughs> You know, people are vultures when people die. I well, mean, I if these people much... want to have a say after they've dead, then great, let yeah. them have it. Are there ones that you reject? I mean, I know that you've, um, you've done seven so far. You've interviewed people for uh, 11 others. Uh, presumably there are funerals you won't attend or uh, there are messages no, that no, you there's wouldn't no deliver. Funeral I won't... No, there's no funeral I won't gate crash. The only thing I won't do is assist <laughs> in the, um, the dying of somebody. And I won't assist in um, taking uh, somebody's, you know, pet because I've had, you know, requests that, you know, that, that you know, their pet go with them. I mean, that's, oh. that's ludicrous and I wouldn't do that. Right. But at the same time, you know, there are certain things I wouldn't do, but I mean, I'd gate crash any funeral. I mean, I've heard that Ricky Gervais is looking for me. If he wants me to gate crash his funeral, I'll be there anytime. Well, hopefully that's not something oh. that's on the cards imminently. Did, 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 I also, did I also read that you were, once, you were once asked to dress up as Matt Lucas, a British comedian, is that right? <laughs> that was recently, yes. Recently I was asked to dress up of two characters. Uh, Matt Lucas was one of them and I had to find out and Google who he was. I realised who he was after He's I Googled him. He's huge over here, by the, the way. The other one was... <laughs> yeah, he is huge over there, sorry. Uh, no disrespect, but I didn't know who he was. Um, the like other character funeral was, soon uh, that, Homer clearly. Simpson, believe it or not. Now, hang on, did, were you dressing as Matt Lucas, the actor, the person, or one of his characters? I'm sort of slightly confused. No, him himself. Oh, right, wow. And why did they want Matt Lucas appearing at their funeral? I, I guess it's like any, anything, you know, that there's... I can see this turning into, like, um, some person taking on themed funerals. I, and I can see that going in another direction. That's not for me, that's not what I do. This isn't about being tacky or anything like that. This is about lending my voice to the departed. Mm. Um, it, it's basically letting those that, that were loved know how much they were loved and those that he loved to hate or they loved to hate to bugger off. I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, you know, if we, if we do think about your funeral, I suppose you want to be in control of it. It is quite a big moment, and I yes. suppose that is one way of, of well, controlling your funeral when you're... But you, you would normally discuss that with your family, wouldn't you? What's extraordinary is that suddenly a stranger yeah, but, like you turns up and, and, um, and does it. But I think that's the, the, the best part about this, is they're not confiding in the family, they're not confiding in a priest, they're not confiding in anybody else but myself. And they're saying, you know what? I want to leave on my terms, I want to have the last say, and I don't want anybody else to have it for me. Mm. Fantastic. How much do you charge you for this service, by the way? It. How much do you charge for this service? Uh, that, well, it can range, but, I mean, I've been paid up to $10,000 to attend a funeral and crash it. <laughs> wow. wow. Incredible. I feel like oh, yeah. it. Thanks very much. Yeah. Um, the Coffin Confessor. Mm. So, at that very first funeral, where um, he was hired by the terminally ill man to uh, tell certain mourners to go. There were 88 people at the funeral. He started going through the list of names. More than half of them got up to leave because they just assumed at they some point they'd be told. That's, or, or they were scared mm. that some sort of secret or something yes. was going to come out about wow. them. I mean, I think you've got a point. The, the funeral... Is the funeral about the person who I has know. died or is the funeral actually about everybody else sort of dealing with their grief? Yeah. Mm. And, and laying all of those memories it's to rest? It's rather a shame that he doesn't mm. encourage the person to have those thoughts and conversations while he's still alive. Because mm. then things might get resolved. I it's also quite extraordinary to hear someone say, I'll gate-crash anything. I know. Yes. I mean, you yeah. know, that's yeah. the soundbite of the morning, really, I, isn't I, uh... it?